All right, this is 7.3, proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Essential question, how can you prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram? What you're expected to be able to do at the end of this is to identify and verify parallelograms. And we also want to show that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram in the coordinate plane. Okay, so today we're talking about different ways to show or to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. The first one I'm going to show you is actually can just the definition of a parallelogram. So if you're given some kind of quadrilateral A, B, C, D, and you can show that segment A, B is parallel to segment C, D, and that segment B, C is parallel to segment A, D, then you can prove that you have a quadrilateral, or you know that you have a quadrilateral. Let me just write it out. Segment AB is parallel to segment CD, and segment BC is parallel to segment AD. Okay. If you can show these two statements, that means you have a parallelogram. All right. Uh, the second way that we can do this is um, if we have some quadrilateral, and let's just call this one, I don't know, L, M, N, O. Uh, and I know that, or I can prove somehow, either by something that's given to me, or some way that I can figure out that, say, the segment LM is congruent to segment NO, or ON, and segment LO is congruent to segment MN. Okay, if I can prove those pair of opposite sides being congruent, then I know that I have a parallelogram. Okay, the third one, uh, the third way that we're going to show that, uh, or prove that a parallel quadrilateral is a parallelogram is if is if I can show that I have two pairs of opposite congruent angles. So somehow I can show that angle M is congruent to angle O, angle L is congruent to angle N, then I know that I have a parallelogram. Right, so if you're writing these down, segment M is congruent to, or excuse me, angle M is congruent to angle O, and you have to show that angle L is congruent to angle N. Opposite angles have to be congruent. All right, the fourth way that we have that we can show that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, if we have some quadrilateral, all right, we'll just call this one D, E, F, G. Okay, and what I want to be able to prove is that I have a pair of opposite congruent sides and also that those two sides are parallel. Okay. The other things that we talked about is I had to show two pairs of opposite sides being congruent and two pairs of opposite sides being parallel. This method just shows us that I only need to know one pair of sides that are congruent and also parallel. Okay, so if I can show EF, segment EF is congruent to segment DG, and I can show the segment DG, or segment EF is parallel to segment DG, then I know the parallelogram, or the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Now, I don't have to know anything about segment DE and segment GF. Okay. Right, the, the last method that we're going to talk about, or I'm going to show you today, on how to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram is if I have some quadrilateral and I know that the diagonals bisect each other then I have a parallelogram. So if, uh, let's go back to A, B, C, D All right, and we can call this point P I guess and if I know that segment BP is congruent to segment DP and I can say that segment AP is congruent to segment CP then that tells me that I have a parallelogram. I don't need to know anything about these outside parts, but I have to show that the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, uh, this example in quadrilateral WXYZ, the measure of angle W is 42, measure of angle X is 138, and the measure of angle Y is 42. We want to find the measure of angle Z. And we also want to ask the question, is WXYZ a parallelogram? Uh, so uh, we want to start by drawing some shape, or quadrilateral, not just a shape. 
I'm going to go ahead and call this w, x, y, and z. And I know that w is 42 degrees, x is 138. And then we have some unknown angle here. Okay. So um, we have to figure out what that angle is. Because it is a quadrilateral, I know all of these angles here have to add up to 360. So if I take um, x plus 42 plus 138 plus 42 and set that equal to 360, okay, I can solve that. Let's see, that's going to come out to be 180 plus 42 is going to be 222. So 222 plus x, let's write it the other way, x plus 222 is equal to 360. Um, if I subtract the 222, I get that x is 138. Okay. So the measure of angle z is 138 degrees. Okay. And then to answer this question, is W, X, Y, Z a parallelogram? My answer would be yes, because um, I have opposite angles are congruent. And I guess I should say both pairs of opposite angles. Yes, because both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Alright, so here's another example, and again we want to show if this quadrilateral, we want to explain if this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, this one the answer um, is yes, and the reason for that is because I have a pair of parallel sides and those two sides are congruent. They both have this variable A. I don't know what they are, what that variable stands for as far as a number, but if this side is some length A, this side up here also has to be some length A. So they're congruent and parallel. So I know, yes, this is a parallelogram. All right, here's a different uh, type of problem. We're still trying to show that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram, but they want us to figure out the values that would make it a parallelogram. So, um, I have this 3x minus 20, x plus 40, and 4y here. So um, if it is a parallelogram, I know that consecutive uh, angles are supplementary. So to solve for x, I would have to do 3x minus 20 plus x plus 40 and set that equal to 180 degrees. Okay, if I combine like terms, it gives me 4x minus, or plus 20 is equal to 180. Subtract 20 gives me 4x equals 160. And then if I divide by 4, that tells me that x is 40. Okay. So that's okay. The other part, um, now we can solve for y. Uh, the other side over here, these are consecutive. So that means I can do 40 plus 40. If I substitute my 40 for x, I know that 40 plus 40 plus 4y has to equal 180. Okay, so this gives me 80 plus 4y equals 180. Subtract 80 from both sides, it tells me that 4y is 100. And then if I divide by 4, that tells me that y is going to be 25. Right, so for this problem, x is 40 and y is 25. Okay. On this example, uh, it wants us to show that the quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. This time, the quadrilateral is on the coordinate plane. So we're going to talk about it. We're still going to do the same things as far as the different ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We're just putting it on a coordinate graph, which means I can do two ways. I can show that the opposite sides are parallel for both. I can show these two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. That would be one way to show it if I can do that. The other thing is I could just pick one side, like say if I looked at AD and BC, and if I said, or if I showed that these two are parallel and congruent, 
then I know that I have a quadrilateral. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing a little better. Um, okay, so uh, let's start by showing that um, I'm going to pick AD and BC. And so I'm going to show, or I'm going to look at this, I'm going to decide whether AD is parallel to BC. Okay, so I'm going to, is that true or not? First thing I need to do for that um, is to look at the slopes. That's how I determine if they're parallel. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to look at um, rise over run. So if I'm looking at the slope of C to B, or if I'm going from C to B, I go up 3 and left 3, so that's minus 3. So the slope of BC or CB is going to be negative 3. 3 over 3, which is just negative 1. Okay, now I want to do the same thing for A to D. So if I'm looking at that, I'm going to go up 3, and I go back 3, so that's negative 3. Okay, so the slope of um, segment AD is also negative 3 over 3, which is negative 1. So, yes, I know that these two sides are parallel. Okay, now I have to show if they are congruent. Now to do that, we're going to have to look at the distance formula. Okay, so I need to find the length of AD. So we're going to do um, our x2 minus x1, so it's going to be 0 minus a negative 3 squared plus 0 minus 3 squared. Okay. Now what that comes out to be, that's going to be 3 squared and negative 3 squared, so that's 9 plus 9. So this comes out to the square root of 18. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing with BC. All right. So I've got uh, 5 minus 2 squared plus 2 minus 5 squared. Okay. 5 minus 2 is 3. So that's 3 squared. 2 minus 5 is negative 3, which is negative 3 squared. Okay, so both of those, if I put those in, that comes out to the square root of 18. Okay, and which means that AD, the length of AD, segment AD is congruent to segment BC. So then I would say yes. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. 